Welcome to Outside the Cage, the Javier Mendez podcast channel. Today, we've got a special guest, Tassin Takla, and he's very unique. We've had fighters here. We've had coaches here. But Tassin, you know, I met him through AKA. He is, uh, was doing tours for people that wanted to go to Dagestan. And I know a lot of people come to this channel and they want to find out, how do I go train in Dagestan? It's like the secret place. How do they get there? They don't have a tour guide. They don't know anybody. They don't have the right introductions. So let me ask you, Tassin, how was it that you got there? What, you know, did you have family there or how did your journey to, you know, ending up where all the great fighters out of Dagestan train? Well, first, thank you for uh, having me on your podcast. I really appreciate it. Um, well, with the Dagestan situation, it actually goes back to like 2010, 2011. Um, my first jujitsu coach was from Dagestan. And uh, when I started training with them, at that time, I knew what Dagestan was. It was part of the Caucasus region. And, um, I had an idea. I, I kind of liked it a little bit. But after training with them for almost two years, it just sparked this crazy interest. And during my time while training there, we had people that would come visit from Dagestan, Chechnya, and different parts of Russia. Because, you know, in Abu Dhabi, they had the Abu Dhabi World Pro Jiu-Jitsu uh, mm -hmm. tournament. So they would come there for like a month before the tournament or two weeks, and they would just start preparing. Um so I got to meet a lot of Dagestanis. And during that time, I built up my connection and networking. And I kept friends with them and it just built to this dream that one day, you know what, I'm going to visit Dagestan. I'm going to visit Dagestan from 2010. And um, I made it happen, you know, and it was like a dream come true. I had a, like a dozen friends over there waiting for me. And I went and I visited. And it was like an absolute dream come true. So very fortunate for that to happen. Very, very happy for that. I think, I think it's interesting because a lot of people like, they don't know where it is. What plane do I catch? Uh, how do I yeah. get there? What hotels? I don't speak the language. Mm -hmm. And so you get out and you started like a tourism travel group type company where you take people there, you go there and guide them through. Plus you're into grappling yourself. You're yeah, into that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, after, after a few times of visiting there, I saw a little demand from outside people they were asking me a lot of questions hey how do i get there what do i do basically the same questions you were asking me and i said you know what i need to, i need to start something so i started a jiu-jitsu tour program out there so i take people from all over the world to dagestan russia for jiu-jitsu tour camps and tourism sightseeing etc you know and um we cover absolutely everything you pay for the package you pay for the airfare and the moment you get to moscow we take you on an airplane to dagestan and we take care of absolutely everything from accommodation, transportation, sightseeing, training, food, even your stinky laundry. You know, we take care of that. So um, everything is included in the, in the package. We just want to make sure um, you have a fun time, you have a good time, uh, you're safe, you're with us the whole time. You have, there's a translator on deck everywhere we go and just having a good time. So all that stuff you just asked me, you don't have to worry about because we take care of everything from A to Z. That's pretty cool. Now, I know a lot of people are going to bring this up because this is always addressed. Mm -hmm on the mm -hmm. podcast when Javier and I are on here. Um, Dagestani wrestling. Now, I know mm -hmm. that a lot of Russians have a base in Sambo and then they have, they call what they call Dagestani wrestling. That's there's true. Greco and there's, you know, there's all the different types of, of, of yeah. wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's jujitsu and there's a fusion. So do you also take people by the wrestling to see the wrestling, what they do there, like their local version of it, as opposed yeah. to like the American college version? So because, because we're, um, a tourism based group we don't just want to take people just for jujitsu like nope no you can't go to wrestling well of course you can go to wrestling you i mean you're here to experience the culture that's why the jujitsu tours we offer we take people to different jujitsu academies so they get a glimpse of how this coach is running his uh, his academy how this coach is doing this um but we also take people to the Dagestani wrestling um training facilities just to see what kind of high intensity level they have because there's a lot of Olympians out there in, in, in wrestling and judo. So we do take people to experience that. And it's, and it's one hell, hell of an experience. Um, yeah. It's uh, they call it the Dagestani wrestling, even though it's just freestyle wrestling, but they like to affiliate it with. with right. Like well, they've, they've made their own fusion, just like, you know, how jujitsu originally came from Japan and then right. uh, the Gracie's brought it to Brazil. That's right. And um, then they modified it. It was a it was a type of sport you can evolve. If I teach you a regular martial art, position one, position two, position yeah. three. Whereas jujitsu right. is always evolving. And and some right. people in the states, like let's say an Eddie Bravo, added his own freestyle names to twenty different things. That's right. So he yeah. branded it, That's which is smart marketing. But 
you know, it's an always evolving art, which is different than some things where, okay, you know, these five kicks, red belt, whatever, exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. You know, and um, excuse me, um, when we have people join our tour camps, depending on the flexib flexibility of um, our clients, we do take them to some wrestling training as well. So it's not jujitsu, strictly jujitsu, it's also wrestling. Um, however, the most popular is going on is jujitsu and MMA. It's that cross breed in between. So yeah, we do take people to some wrestling classes here and there, or even just to watch some of the Olympians uh, train. Yeah, so we do offer that, you know, just to get the glimpse of Dagestan. I wanna, I wanna share a little bit of that on the screen here. You know, this is a little unique thing. And the name of your company is Rise and Glide. We haven't even got right. to that part yet. You know, we're just taking our time, guys. This is not formally prep. We're just talking to a couple of guys to give you the right. real insight. No, you know, <laughs> no pre-planning. We just the go. Bro, bro's hanging out, you know. Right, that's right. So here you go. Um, this is over there. This is the wrestling camp where you were at, right? I'm just sharing from your YouTube channel. Rise that's and Glide, true. as you guys can see in the bottom right. Um, this is the training. It looks like everybody in that country trains in grappling. I mean, what percentage did you see while you were there? You know what it is from since like the moment they can start walk, walking, they, they put them in wrestling or gymnastics. And, um, you know how in the, in, in the States we have, um, like the, the AYSO free soccer training. Um, mm -hmm. we have over there, they have wrestling. It's free. It's provided by the government. You just throw your kids in and they become wrestlers from a young age. So almost 95% of the people you meet, of the men you meet, they have a wrestling background. That's amazing. But look at this facility it is wall to wall. There's got to be a couple hundred guys yeah. in there. And this is and, just regular day of practice, huh? Oh yeah. This is just a regular night of practice. And you know, this facility, that guy in the middle right there wearing the black t-shirt, the older gentleman, you have to take his approval to come and train in this facility. It's not, it's like an invite only. Um, he has to know who you are, where you train. It's not just anybody can walk in. So this facility is really breeding some, you know, high level champions. Well, it's, it's interesting. So this was just to give you guys a quick glimpse of what it's like over there. Maybe we'll flash something back up in a minute, but I met you because, uh, you know, you had your shirts. It's not like you're trying to be the next tap out. It's part of something that works with That's your right. company, the rise and glide, you, you know, how to do graphic design and all that, but you make really cool rash guards and stuff like that. That's and right. I was like, you know, Javier's like, go get a sponsor. I go, I'm going to call the guy that people actually <laughs> are interested in what he does. You know, I'm not here selling some new soda or, you know, some protein powder that, Energy drink, yeah. that may be questionable. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that everything out there is bad. Like, if, for example, like Habib's got some really good stuff, but if you're in the States, I don't think you can order his fit brew or his different proteins, right? I'm so it you. depends where you are. This is a global audience. There's people in That's Indonesia, right. people over in, you know, you Sweden, Germany over. watching this channel. It's, it's, it's bizarre, the Habib factor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we really, and you know what? Um, I really appreciate this opportunity to get my uh, my voice heard of what we do. And so thank you. Thank you very much for having me on the podcast. Well, people have asked us, man. People have asked us. They're like, hey, Imagine. how do I get there? And I'm like, well, I, know, I can tell you how to get to AKA. But you want that really, you want to, you, you know. Yeah. That's, yeah. Jose, that's in California. It's probably, you know, similar yeah. in expense because California is expensive. So California is pretty expensive. If you want the real world experience, I mean, you, you, I saw some of your videos. You ran into Zabit while you were there? That's right. Zabit, you know, it was, uh, it was very interesting. One of my friends, he has a clothing brand out there and they sponsor Zabit. So they're his official clothing sponsor. And um, when I went to do my vlog, we were, we were just hanging out and uh, he's like, come join us, Zabit's here. I'm like, what, is Zabit, really? Okay, well, let's, let's take this opportunity. We got to, so we got to hang out with Zabit and we had some lunch and we talked a little bit and he threw in a few words for it for advertising, but it was really nice to meet him. Super humble guy. You won't even recognize him. You know, just walking out, having his hoodie covering his face. So nobody can see him, but, and that's the reality of Dagestan. You know, every uh, corner you'll find a fighter. Famous yeah. or not, everybody's fighting in Bellator, MMA, uh, UFC, one of some type of- CA, one, you name it, right? You name it. Someone's fighting somewhere, someone's some Olympian somewhere. And you'll really bump into them, you know, everywhere you go. So that's the reality of Dagestan. The so fight factor. We, I have a quick question. What was the level like training in the States and then going to the ground yeah. floor where the real 
you know, where the, where the beginning of it all starts, where oh, the man. duty guys that they don't sitting around on their Xbox. No, they're grappling. Yeah. Well, well grab- the states around yeah. their Xbox. I know they yeah. have Xboxes, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, the, the kids out there, they don't um, in certain villages, they don't sit down, like you said, and play Xbox or on their phones. Their parents just throw them out to like, go play, go, go wrestle or go do some, some combat sports. Um, the intensity there uh, was very high. It was very intense. And I'll, I'll explain why. The region they're from, it's, it's the mountain, so it gets really cold. So this is my theory, right? So the region builds and structures very tough people, the mindset and how they're raised up. And it has to do also with the food they eat. So they, be, they eat very um, high protein foods and a lot of carbs. So that just all accumulates to this, you know, type of mindset they have and the type of body they have. I know this is going to be, it's going to sound a bit weird, but if you look at the people in the United States, their skin is actually thin. When you go to Dagestan, their skin is actually thick. And I've been doing my research and it has to do with the climate they're raised in and the food they eat. Um, that's very interesting. Not, yeah, very interesting stuff. Very interesting. Well, you never see, okay, let's look at a funny, interesting example. How many times was Habib cut up in a fight? Zero. Zero. There Zero. you go. Zero. And, yeah. and, and everyone's like, oh, Tony's elbows. I'm like, no, nah, it wouldn't went down like that. Yeah. No idea. Yeah. It, I'm, 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 television, it looked like Tony had an answer. I don't think so, especially after the Gaethje fight, especially after yeah, that, Fourier, yeah. especially after Connor, especially oh, after, no. after, after forever. Yeah. You know, you don't see him walk away all sliced up that they don't cut yeah. very easily. The fight that's never going to happen. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you also met Habib over at AKA. That's kind of like how I met you at one time through that kind of situation. You yeah. yeah. And he's so humble. Did it surprise yeah. you or you're used to the culture by now? It's, it's pretty normal. You know, when I met Habib, in, um, it was in June of 2019. And uh, I had met him prior to that, a few times prior to that. So he kind of had, had an idea who I was. And I knew his personality a little bit. I know he's very straightforward. And I know he's in training. So this is not the best time because he might be cutting weight. He was cutting weight for a fight, but I can't remember what fight. And um, yeah, it was really nice meeting him. I met Islam and Tagir and Sagid at the time. Um, I met DC. That's the first time I got to meet DC as well. And uh, I just pitched uh, the idea to Habib. I'm like, look, man, this is what I'm doing for Dagestan. I have my business and I just want to give you a few gifts, you know, and I mm-hmm. uh, gave him our rash guards and shorts and some snapbacks. And a few days later, you know, I'm back home and I open Instagram and I see, you know, coach uh, Javier posting Habib wearing a rash guard. And it just, I just jumped out of my seat. I couldn't believe it because <laughs> I didn't expect him to wear it, to be honest, you know, Habib right. was being paid God knows how many millions by Reebok and all these other sponsors he has. Why would he want to wear my rash guard? You know? that, that's the thing that makes him so special. I've been around him. I mean, he's a very amazing man. He's considerably younger than me, but he is wise beyond his years. Yes. And I listen to him and I'm like, wow. And I've met a lot of people in the process being around the fight business of names or people with clout or whatever. But yes. just the guy, like there's just an energy to Habib and I'm sure you'll agree. Yes. It's different. De- definitely, definitely. I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, there's an energy and a vibe and he's very uh, cool, calm and collected when he talks. So mm-hmm. he, does, he doesn't spit out words. He thinks about what he's going to say. And um, like I said, there's a lot of wisdom behind him as well. So very, um, very collected person. I really like him. So yeah. you saw you saw him over when you were in Dagestan or you saw Islam or any of those guys while you were there? You'd run into so them? Yeah. So th- there's, there's actually a, a funny story to that. And in October of 2018, when he was fighting McGregor, um, I made it my plan to go watch the Habib fight with McGregor in Dagestan. I'm like, you know what? There's 20,000 people going to Vegas. I think it was in Vegas at the time to watch the fight. How many people are going to Dagestan to watch his fight? I mean, I'm a fan. Let me be a real fan, you know? So, um, yeah, it was October 6, 2018. And we finished watching the fight. Three days later, um, in the morning, we're having a workout, me and a few friends, and we go have breakfast. And one of Habib's cousins, his direct cousin, is sitting with us having breakfast and picks up the phone. He says, and he just, he's talking in Russian, finishes, looks at us like, okay, we have to go now. Okay, where do we have to go? What's going on, guys? Come on, there's no time. So we pack up real quick and we leave. And uh, sure enough, we're in front of Habib's house. And I'm like, holy moly, holy smokes, you know. And it just started going through my head. How many millions of people around the globe at this moment wish to be in my spot? Right. 
And um, yeah, well, sure enough, we walk and we see Habib right in front of his house. He comes, shakes our hand, and he asks me, what are, you, what are you doing here? I'm like, man, I came to support you, you know? How many people came to the fight in Vegas and how many people came here? I, I'm the only person I know that I came, you know? And he laughed it off. He's like, okay, guys, come, come. So we go to his house, we sit down, we have some tea, and I see his father shake his hand, and um, it was just a memorable time. Even though it was simple, nothing really happened, but... That's all that matters, though. That's what yeah. I understand. Yeah. It's in the simplicity of getting to know him. It's not like you have to meet Habib and drive in a twin-turbo Ferrari to know him. Yeah, exactly. Even just running into him in the lobby at AKA when he was training there, yeah. there, there was yeah. something there that was like, yeah. you knew you were around greatness. Definitely, and, yeah. And he's a very humble man. He doesn't like hey, look how cool. He'll never say that. That's not his religion. That's no. not his personality. No, it, that's not him. A lot of people don't understand sometimes. I know that all the Muslim people that do watch the channel understand mm -hmm. humble, humble, what's haram, what's not haram. Exactly. Like me, even me running the YouTube channel, I have to understand. I'm not going to counter program what this channel is about. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. so that's, yeah. that's, 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 the, that's the thing. And um, so, so typically in your religion, it's like you can't brag about oneself, right? bragging is like yeah not, not so a thing you do you can't do exactly something. exactly it's it's frowned upon to uh speak so well of yourself continuously there's times and places where you should um speak about yourself and self-promote yourself but to keep constantly bragging that's very uh frowned upon yeah basically forbidden in a way that's a good rule that's a good rule wouldn't work on youtube but it's a good rule for life i'll tell you oh that. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah definitely because you know if you keep bragging about yourself, it's just, it's an ugly thing to do. And we've seen it with fighters. It's just an ugly thing to do because life takes its toll and it humbles everybody in its own way. It always does. You could yeah. be king of the mountain for a minute and then along comes a great wind. It exactly. knocks you down. It happens. That's it. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Up a few mountains. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's you know, from, from, slaves, from slaves to kings and from kings to slaves. That's how life works sometimes. You know? It's a whole cycle. So let me ask you, have you trained at any Brazilian jiu-jitsu places and seen the difference on how the jiu-jitsu is, the levels, or like, you know, I'm not putting one down over the other, but yeah, what would you yeah. say the difference is between the two? Like if you train Dagestani jiu-jitsu, obviously, because your coach is from Dagestan versus right. Brazilian, what would you say the differences would be? So, um, well, my current coach is not from Dagestan. I just, I just want the people to know my current coach is not from Dagestan. I, I train out here in California, um, but the main difference I see when you have a Brazilian teach Brazil, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is that they're very slow, cool, calm, and collected when they're teaching. Because that's how Jiu-Jitsu is. You can relax a little bit during rolling, during technique. So when they're teaching technique, it's very slow. You grip this right here. You go, you put the pressure, you know. Um, as compared to the Dagestanis, again, going back to the climate they're in, their blood is always boiling. So you try to teach a technique slowly and he just does it fast. He just doesn't have the patience to do that, you know? Mm. And so when that mix starting started to come in where, okay, grappling jujitsu with these fast paced people, it created that wrestling, the freestyle. Mm -hmm. And now submissions were included. So you see fast submissions and it just created a whole new dynamic of grappling. So they, they took it out of the old standard, gradually, gradually. I mean, if you look back and many people watching this channel you know, might not have ever seen Hoist Gracie in UFC one, two, or three, whichever yeah. one of those he was in. Yeah. I forget exactly which ones, but it's like back before anybody knew how to counter, a, you know, a Darce choke behind the neck. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's no. like it's like it's like they're like he's it's coming in. Oh no, you can't stop this. Here it comes. <laughs> oh no, it's all over. <laughs> you know, here, here we oh, go. Yeah. You know, and and, and you know, I'll, I'll you know answer the phone. You know, break exactly. the, yeah, answer break. the phone. Yeah. From hitting your carotid arteries over on the side there. That's right. right. That's let's right. See, let's see what else we got. This is just uh, an interesting podcast as I'm going along here. Um, let me see what we got here from Rise and Glide. Um, <coughs> maybe some of the nature. Because it's a very beautiful place. Um, I think I'll share that. I mean, what, what, what about the food? Did you really like the food over there? Was that really good? Man, let me tell you. Let me tell you something. The food there is so good. I go there for training. I come back with 10, 15 pounds extra. Mm -hmm. And the food there is just so good, so pure, so clean, and just so tasty. Man. I can imagine. So here you are. Once again, everybody, make sure you tune in and subscribe to his channel because we're on the same page, man. This isn't a, a push. 
you can find out a lot of stuff about Dagestan you didn't know with somebody who's speaking more American English, which makes it interesting. If you already live there, then you already know. <laughs> you know, but but here you are. I mean, this is uh, let me skip ahead. So you're outside checking out the birds. A lot of eagles over there, huh? I I have no clue what that bird is. The mm -hmm. beak look, 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 looks like it's made out of metal, and they say that it, eat, it eats only meat. And I'm like, you know what? Just keep me away from. <laughs> <laughs> No, those are the horses that was going to get fed. I'm kidding, but no. Uh, yeah. so, so it's a really nice mountainous region. Were you there in the winter time, or is this like spring where it's kind of chilly? This one was um, end of spring. Uh, you know, I think it was in the winter time because it was it was really cold. This one was in November, October, November. That was my client. Yeah, that was in October, so it was fairly cold. There was still some some snow going on in certain parts. Oh, you um, wow, nice cat there. So you're doing some horse riding. I wanted to skip ahead to that. So that must have been fun. Yeah. So, you know, what we do after training, um, we like to take our clients to do different activities. And one of them is horseback riding in the beautiful mountains of Makhachkala, Dagestan. And it's a beautiful way to, to have active rest. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just to enjoy the nature. And see over here, he's telling us that he, he saw the footprints of a fox walking through. How he saw it, I have no clue. You know, people that, are, that grew up in that environment really know their nature really well. Yeah. Trackers, you know, they know what they're looking at. To us, we're like, that's dirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they they see what it is. But, you know, this is pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot, you get a lot of good videos in your vlog on Rise and Glide and also riseandglide.com. Sure. And that's when right. is your, when are you planning to do your next one? I mean, do you have anything you're building up? I know it's been all about COVID and the restrictions. So it's kind of mm -hmm. based on that, right? That's right. Yeah, it's based around... COVID restrictions. However, now things have opened up a bit. So we have uh, some tour camps coming up in July, August, October, November. Uh, this is for the year of 2021. And um, we haven't released a schedule for 2022 yet. And that's, that's in the works at the moment. So yeah, those are the few camps we have coming out right now. And how, how long does the tour usually take? How long are the people there training? What's the typical time that they spend over there? Yeah, so we offer two, uh, two different tour camps. We offer a 10-day program and we offer a 14-day program, uh, two different slots. However, if we have enough people or enough clients that want to do, let's say, seven days or 11 days, and they, they can all agree to that, we can, we can tailor it to them. You know, it's not really restricted to 10 or 14 days. And what is the training schedule like? I mean, they're coming, they're training. These are typically grapplers. They're not like yeah. going to look up historical sites. Maybe they will after, after working out, but... Exactly. This exactly. is the real experience. I mean, you like Habib, you want to grapple, you get to go here, man. And that, that's yeah. where it is. Yeah. That's, that's, this is the spot. We even take uh, people to Habib's gym to, to have a look around, you know, his new gym over there. Um, so the training is uh, two times a day. In the morning, we have CrossFit, strength and conditioning. Sometimes we have jujitsu and grappling. And in the evening, we have jujitsu, either gi or no gi. And in between is where you get your rest, you get your, uh, your meals. And you get um, some type of activity. Activity it can be horseback riding. It can be a sauna, uh, Russian sauna. It can be uh, archery. It can be paddle boarding, depending on the season. So there's, it's it's a full schedule from morning you're not, to. You're not going to make them swim in that river that have even. <laughs> they're not. They're not ready for that one yet, unless they want to go. That's up to them. You know? I don't know if anyone's ever seen those videos where Habib or Islam, the guys, dive into this river that's that's going 100 miles an hour. Oh, it's uh, funny enough. Javier, who I'll have to call back in a minute. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to wrap this up in a second because, I, of course, Javier's calling. But it has been awesome having you on here, man. And we are happy that you're sponsoring us. But I wanted people to find out about Dagestan. That's why I called you. You know, I know you're working hard. And, um, you know, I'm sure people will love to go there. How big are the groups usually? Like, how many slots do you usually have open when you do these? So we have until... 12 to 14 people yeah, mm -hmm. we've had some requests for 20 to 40 um so it really depends on what time and what season and um they're going to join us with but we can we can accommodate to a large number of people so that's pretty cool man and you've done how many of these so far we've done we've done a handful of them yeah we've mm -hmm. done a handful but covid really took a took a toll yeah on us. you were just getting your momentum when i was talking to you exactly we were just getting totally. started in well, listen, I want people to look up Rise and Glide. That's the name. That's the name of your channel. And it is at Rise and Glide, right? Yeah, Rise and Glide. Yes, sir. You know, and then they can also see you over in uh, Instagram the same. And I'm going to put the links in here. 
And I appreciate you taking the time. And, you know, maybe we'll do this again. It's been really yeah, awesome. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you for having me. It was an honor. It was a pleasure. And I uh, hope to speak with you again.